Hey there, future robot builders. I'm super excited to have you here for building the beginner soccer robot. So, grab your curiosity, put on your robot building hat, and let's get started. Alright, team. Now it's time to start putting things together. Let us start with the chassis first. Let me quickly show you the front and back sides of our robot. This is the front side where all the action happens. And this is the back side. First up, we'll assemble the spacers. These are like the pillars that will elevate our robot's main circuit boards. For that we will have to take 4 M3, 15 mm spacers and 4 M3, 6 mm bolts from the kit. First we will fix the bolts on the chassis, then the spacers. We'll assemble the spacers. Now, let's talk about the motors. Motors are like the muscles of our robot. They make the wheels turn, and that's how our robot moves. These specific motors we're using are called BO motors. But our BO motor here is a bit special. It has a series of plastic gears attached to the motor like this and is encased in this nice plastic case. Each motor has a shaft which is the spinning part right here. It's like the axle of a car. When these motor shafts turn, they make our wheels spin, and that's how our robot goes forward and backward. <music> to attach the motors, we'll need some long bolts and nuts. These are the M3 25mm bolts and 3mm nuts. One motor will need two of them so take out four and make sure the motors are securely attached on the chassis. I have my motor shafts projecting out like this after fixing it so that I fix my wheels on them. Before connecting the wheels to the shaft of the motor, have a look at the shape of the shaft and hole in the wheel. They are not perfectly cylindrical in shape, these types of shafts are called double D type shafts. Match the hole and push gently to fix the wheel. Do not break them. Arduino is incredibly smart, but it can't directly control these motors on its own. This is where our motor driver comes in. Think of it as a translator between Arduino and the motors. 
It takes the signals from Arduino and amplifies them to give our motors the power they need to move. Here we use a motor driver, called L298N Motor Driver. Adjust the position of spacers accordingly and mount the driver like this. First, let's connect the power cables to the motor driver. In the kit, you'll find two wires that look similar for this purpose. These wires provide the necessary power supply for the motor driver to function properly. You'll notice two green connectors on the motor driver marked with plus 12V and GND. Let us loosen the screws like this and poke the hole with the screwdriver so that it is easy to put the wires inside it. Now, it's time to connect the motors to the motor driver. Let us take out the four wires coming out of the BO motors to the top through this hole and connect them accordingly. Let us loosen the screws like this and poke the hole with the screwdriver so that it is easy to put the wires inside it. Tight the screw back and make sure that the connection is intact. And the other motor connection goes into this connector. Next, we place our Arduino board right here, on top of these spacers. I will match these diagonal holes on the Arduino Uno board to the spacers here, and fix them with 2 cubic meters 6 millimeters bolts. Now, we need to connect the motor driver to the Arduino Uno. For that we are going to use another component called a screw shield. These screw shields can be connected on top of the Arduino like this. Before mounting them on the Arduino, let us connect the motor driver with these four wires. Make sure that you take the screw shield with labels RX, TX, 2, 3, 4, etc. Here, let us connect the first two wires onto these green connectors with labels 10 and 11. Similarly, the other two wires should be connected to 5th and 6th green connectors. Loosen the screws on these connectors, create space for the wires, and then tighten the screws. Before mounting them on the Arduino, let us connect the motor driver with these four wires. The black end of the wires go onto these specific pins like this. Let us mount this shield on these black rails with labels digital PWM on the Arduino board. Remember these two power supply connections on the motor driver. Let us connect them on to the other screw shield. In this shield you will find the connectors with labels VIN and GND. 
Let us connect the wire from 12V connector of the motor driver to the VIN connector on the shield. Similarly, the wire connected to the GND of the motor driver should be connected to the GND on the shield. Make sure that these connections are correct, otherwise it might damage the motor driver. Now let us fix the shield on to this side of the Arduino board. Here is the joystick module for controlling the robot. This is similar to the joystick control you might have seen in any gaming controller. You will see five wires coming out of the joystick pins labeled as G and D, plus 5V, DRX, DRE, and SW. G and D and plus 5V should be connected to the Arduino board's G and D and 5V pins so that it gets enough power supply to work. Other pins need to be connected to the pins A0, A1, A2 of the Arduino board. Now, let's grab the battery holder from your kit. You'll notice a black jack connector on it, which we'll use to power up your robot through the Arduino. On the back side of the holder, you'll find double-sided tape. Peel off the backing and carefully stick the battery holder to the bottom side of your robot's chassis. It might need a little push to make sure it sticks securely. Make sure that your battery holder jack is disconnected from the Arduino. Now insert the batteries into the holder and double check all the wire connections on your robot. are done. Plug the jack onto the Arduino board and you will see a couple of LED lights on the Arduino and motor driver. We're almost ready to bring your robot to life. Now it is time to upload the code for the soccer robot to make it functional. Here we have the code for making the robot move accordingly with the joystick. Let us connect the robot with the computer and upload the code. Choose the correct board and port first from the tools menu. Then, let us check if there is any error in the code by compiling it from the sketch menu. Once it is done without any errors, let us upload the code and see if the robot is working properly. the fully functional soccer robot ready to play the game. As you move the stick on the controller you can see the robot moving smoothly. Master the control and get ready to play soccer.